Hello, hello, and welcome again to a Beatles show that we call Things We Said Today. This is a talk show in which we talk about anything that has to do with the Beatles, any part of their history, their music, you name it, the past, present, any part of their careers we cover here on this show. I'm Ken Michaels. I'm one of the co-hosts of the program, and some of you might know me from my other Beatles show, which is called Every Little Thing. And I'm being joined by my three other co-hosts of the show, my regular co-hosts, beginning with the man who writes for Beatles Examiner, that being Steve Marinucci. Hi, Steve. Hi, Ken. Hello, everyone. And also we have one of the writers for Beatle Fan Magazine, that being Al Sussman. Hi, Ken. Hello there, everybody. And actually, we do have another writer for a Beatle fan, but he also is a music critic and musicologist, and that being Alan Cozen. Hi, hello, Alan. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Hello, Ken. On today's show, we're going to be covering a few topics currently in the news. I want to let uh, everyone know, first of all, that a couple days ago, I had the chance to go to the British Invasion show at Terrytown Music Hall in New York. And this was a show that I had seen several months ago in New Jersey, and for those of you that don't know anything about it, it's basically uh, many of the British Invasion acts of the 60s who are still with us and performing many of their classic songs of the 60s. And the lineup of this particular show was Peter Asher, of course, from Peter and Gordon, great producer. Billy J. Kramer was part of, uh, of this show. Mike Pender of uh, The Searchers. Denny Lane. Of course, with the Moody Blues and Wings, Terry Sylvester, who was in several British bands, the Escorts, the Swinging Blue Jeans, and later the Hollies, and Chad and Jeremy were on the bill. And this was a pretty amazing show. There was a backup band for the entire uh, concert. And this is the same band, by the way, that backs up Peter Asher when he's on tour, Denny Lane when I've seen him. It's the same band that's uh, it's headed by Jeffrey Allen Ross, who's the music director, and he plays the keyboards. And the concert was really sensational. And um, the, every artist really sounded fantastic. The band, compared to when I saw them a few months ago, was just tighter than I've ever heard them. And I really got the uh, you know this incredible vibe from watching the show that everybody was really in seventh heaven, enjoying themselves doing this particular show, not just doing their own songs, but the fact that they were all together. It's a pretty magical thing when you've got these acts who are still who are still with us. And uh, we all know, as time goes on, so many great artists that we grew up listening to are no longer here. And just the fact that these people are still with us and they're still active and you could get all six of these acts together on the same bill is pretty amazing to itself. And everybody sounded fantastic. I don't want to single out anyone in particular because they were all wonderful. But um, I've seen Chad and Jeremy uh, for a good 10 years now, whenever they come into our area, and I live in Connecticut, and um, they sound absolutely incredible. You know, if you grew up listening to Chad and Jeremy, the thing is, if you, if you closed your eyes while this concert was on, you would have thought that time stood still. They sound exactly the same, if not better, their harmonies. And uh, that's another thing, not just the sound of uh, the vocals of all the acts, but the acoustics there at Terrytown Music Hall was phenomenal. The, the musicianship, and when Chad and Jeremy performed, they played acoustic guitars, which sounded so crystal clear when you were, when you were listening to the show. But um, just the thrill of seeing all these acts together on the same bill. Denny Lane did mainly his, his uh, Moody Blues stuff. Um, also the song Say You Don't Mind, which was a very big hit for Colin Blundstone in the UK. Of course, he had to do Go Now. All these acts just did a phenomenal job. Peter Asher was the MC for the show. He came out, introduced every single act, closed the show with Peter and Gordon hits. And, uh, you know, it was just an amazing thing. Billy J. Kramer, I've been friends with, fortunate to be friends with since the 80s. He's someone who I know loves and lives for performing. And his voice is as strong as ever. And, you know, each act is up there for roughly close to half an hour. And the entire show, with about a 10-minute intermission, was about three hours. So you really got your money's worth with this show. And... um you know, it, it's the magic of not just the music, but the fact that you could see all these people still 
And there's only a few other acts of the 60s that are out there on a regular basis who could fit the bill being part of the British invasion. So I really hope that this thing can continue. Obviously, it's also not that easy to get all these people uh, the same time during the year because many of them are active performing on a regular basis anyway. But apart from certain people like a Peter Noon who tours all the time or uh, an Eric Burden, someone like that, or the Zombies who sound phenomenal to this day, I've seen them every single time they're they're in my area. They they tour every year, every couple of years, and they're still out there and, and recording new music, which they mix into all their classic stuff. There's only a few other British acts that could really fit this bill for the British Invasion Tour. And uh, you have to tip your hat off to uh, Keith Putney and also to Andrew Sandoval, who put this whole thing together. And it's such an enjoyable thing. If they ever come around in your area, and I do hope that they can they can continue doing this while these people are still here. Hold on to these people for dear life. That's what I'm thinking to myself. Because uh, while they're still with us, we should be appreciating them. And uh, to, to see them all together on the same bill is just uh, an incredible experience. Um, I just want to say I, I did not see the tour when it came through uh, my area. But I did see Chad and Jeremy 20 years ago. And when they played, and they were incredible. They were amazing. They were absolutely, they blew me away. And the fact that they still sound good is is just wonderful. Uh, just fantastic. I saw, I think it was the second show on the, the original tour in September. And, uh, you know, you can tell they were still in the, the gelling stage. Uh, so I know mm. what you mean, Ken, about the band in particular. Uh, but um, uh, Billy J was absolutely, he, you know, obviously I've seen him any number of times in recent years at the Fest for Beatles fans, but yeah. uh, he's, uh, he was absolutely great, uh, at least in the show that I saw in Montclair. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, he's, uh, he, he's so dynamic now. It's, uh, it's really a far cry from what he, was like as a stage act in either in the sixties or even in the seventies, because I saw a a British invasion revival show that Richard Nader produced at Madison square garden in 73. I think it was. And Billy J was very kind of show busy at that point. It was almost, almost had a Vegasy type of delivery. And uh, uh, it's a far cry from what he's like now. He's hmm. much a much much better performer now. Hmm. Yeah, I saw I saw the tour I saw twenty years ago, or actually it was close, it was closer to thirty. Was um, Jerry Marsden, Freddie and the Dreamers? So Freddie Freddie Garrity was still alive at that point. Right. Um, Chad, mm. Chad and Jeremy. Chad and Jeremy. The Mercy Beats and the, and the Searchers without Mike Pinder. Mm-hmm. It was after it was after Pinder had left. So we're talking Frank Allen, right? Um, we're talking that those guys, uh, right. and uh, I can't remember the the other guy, the drum uh, the drummer who passed Chris, away. Chris Curtis, who was still alive. Chris at Curtis, that point. I think, yeah. and and uh, there was one other guy too, and I can't remember who it was. Uh, maybe um, John McNally. There we go. Yeah. Right. So hmm. yeah, that was. Um, I'm not sure. Actually, I'm not sure if Curtis was part of it, but McNally was, and Frank Allen was, and so that was really. I mean, I remember, like I said, Chad and Jeremy were fantastic, and I remember to this day, Freddie Garrity going all over the stage with, sure. with doing the, doing the Freddie. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I mean, those are those are so great, and it's you know, it's too bad. Originally, they had, had there were hopes that Jerry Marson could be part of this thing, and right. you know his. He got sick, and, and uh, although he's better now, it's too bad that uh, that he did not make this because that would have been that would have been a lot of fun. That would have been great to have him there, you know. But yeah, anyway, apparently his doctors yeah. still don't want him to uh, to do any kind of international traveling at this mm-hmm. point, you know. So yeah, which is which is fine, you know, as long as he stays on the on the road to recovery. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thanks for bringing it up. I, I forgot all about Jerry Mars, and I should have mentioned his name, too. And, um, you know, hopefully if this thing continues, he'll be healthy enough to do this the next time around. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I, there's no guarantee this is going to happen every year, but when it does happen, sure. I recommend to everybody, please go see it. Well, it's been it's been a long time coming, and you know, on that note. If it does come, you know, and you have not seen these guys, you should try and get to because the chances are that it may not happen again for a long, long time. And maybe never. Mm. Who knows? Yeah. Steve, you had something to say about a special concert for Brian Epstein. Well, they had a there was a, uh, a special concert over the weekend in Liverpool to help raise money for the statue they've been trying to get for Brian Epstein in Liverpool. And um, a lot of people played. Uh, there was there was two parts of the concert. They had new people and they had old people. The early part of the concert featured uh, members of the Mercy Beats, the uh, Swing and Blue Jeans. Um, you know there there was also there were some Beatles songs played. There were, most of the uh, the second part of the concert were were unknowns. Although one of the names uh, you might recognize was Thomas McConnell, who was the yeah. young Liverpool singer. Who did the um, cover version of the instant cover version of New, and that oh, got Paul yes. McCartney's attention? Oh. He per- he performed at the at the show over the weekend. Uh, I I communicated with him the day after and, and talked to him uh, uh, briefly. So he was there, and there were a few others too. But they played a few Beatles songs. They played Help. They played Hippie Hippie Shake, which actually is not a Beatles song, but the, the Beatles played. They played Baby It's You. They played Slow Down, which the Beatles performed. And so, you know, they Twist and Shout, uh, they, that was performed. This Boy, Eleanor Rigby. So they did, a, you know, a selection of Beatles songs, but they played about a lot of other things too. But anyway, it was it, from what I'm hearing, it was a great show. And um, so we'll see where that goes uh, with that. It's also worth pointing out that I believe certainly Billy J. Kramer would have been there for this if it wasn't for the fact that He's busy with the British Invasion tour. He was instrumental in, 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 in trying to bring a lot of attention to Brian Epstein. And um, in some ways, you know, I do believe that because he was always talking about him, he wrote a song called To Liverpool With Love, in which he mentions how he can't understand why Brian is not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And so he actually made a new version of that song and corrected that, you know, and updated that. So I do believe that Billy J, in some ways, is a little bit responsible for helping Brian to get into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame because of the song that he recorded. And he's always been talking about the the fact that Brian doesn't get and hasn't been getting the um, attention and respect and recognition that he deserves. I was just going to say, though, that uh, Billy Billy is in the on the single, the charity single, Our Friend, that they they put out. His voice is in there. So. So there we go. You know, he did. He did. Uh, he was involved to that extent. There we go. All right. I have. One, okay. I have one more. I have one more news story. One breaking news okay. story. Okay. Breaking news. Okay. Breaking news story. Kanye West dropped his newest single today, all day, and even though Paul's name is not on it, Consequence of Sound is reporting he is on it. He's whistling. So now, <laughs> Al, Al, you have another. Uh, you have another track to. Uh, to discuss. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, I can imagine. Well, I can just I could just picture the uh, the reaction now on uh, actually, social actually, media. That's, that's how I that's how I I happen to switch on my uh, Facebook page and then somebody posted uh, the link and there's already comments and they're not favorable at all. Oh, of course. I ha- and I haven't heard I haven't even heard the song yet. So oh yeah, and I'm sure none of the people that are making the negative comments have heard the song either. Mm-hmm. You know, right. it's all based on good old Kanye. There was one thing I was going to I was going to that hit me last week when I was listening to the song is that Paul intentionally subverted his role in these songs. Oh, yeah. Uh, because he wanted to see the reaction, I think. You know, everybody was say, saying, well, you know, why is he on there? And in fact, I mean, I even said something to that effect about, you know, why they, um, you know, why at the Grammy Awards, you know, he didn't sing. But I think this is, I, I, I after watching the Grammy Awards again, you know, it really hit me that this was, this was fully intentional yeah. um, on, on his part. And 
it's an interesting i mean it's an interesting game you know to to do this and to see the reaction and to and you know and to and to get everybody you know to get everybody all worked up but I mean, that was, part, I think it was part of the plan. I, I, I do. And, uh, um, you know, I mean, I, I don't know if it was Paul's idea or was, maybe it was Condi's idea, but it's interesting that it's it's doing that way, you know, that that's what's happening. And so I don't know. Well, you know, you know it, something, it, Paul McCartney could put out the best single of his career right now and CHR radio, contemporary hit radio, will not touch it because no. it's Paul McCartney and because he's not the artist that guards demographically. Mm-hmm. But I think that by putting out a single with Kanye with Kanye West and Rihanna, and he's not singing on it, I think that actually helps him for mm-hmm. the song to be a hit. Because if he was all over it vocally, a lot of stations wouldn't play it. Exactly. They might play it more because of Kanye and Rihanna. Well, they definitely would. Mm-hmm. But um, it just it's more a reflection of the industry and the way that music is programmed now, what gets played, why certain music does and why certain music doesn't. It should, ha- it should be purely about the music, but it's not. So if this mm-hmm. is a way that Paul can get a hit again, I say good for you, go for it. It's pretty ridiculous that Paul has put out so many great singles in the last 20 years that have gone nowhere, and it doesn't really matter what the quality is of his music. Because that format of radio that's aiming towards younger people, they don't feel that they are interested in, in Paul McCartney, regardless of what he does. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's even surprising that Paul's name is on the record, to tell you the truth. But this way he it's still not, has a hit. The new one does not mention his name. It mentions two other people, but his name is not mentioned. But uh, No, I'm talking, one, I'm, one, I'm talking about... I'm talking about four or five songs? seconds. The first, yeah, the first two. You know, right. his name okay. is there on the record. Mm-hmm. Right. But it's surprising that it's even there as far as I'm concerned. But yeah. that way he's getting credit for the record without hearing his vocals. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This one doesn't mention his name, which is which is really a, an interesting development here. So, I think that to say that this is a way for Paul McCartney to have a hit is – really stretching a point i I mean (laughs) i i i have it in my itunes playlist of you know complete sequential paul mccartney stuff but i don't think of it as a paul mccartney record it's just something he's on you know exactly um you know it it could be flowers in the window by um travis you know he's he apparently Mm -hmm. helped with that but Mm -hmm. you know wasn't credited either um i think it's a paul mccartney record if he sings it yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the way I Well, am. that's uh, I I don't know about that. You know, what about the music that he's gotten behind where his lead vocals are not on there? You know, um they're collaborations. That's how I look at it. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's still because his name is actually on the record as the artist, he's getting credit for having a hit. So, <laughs> You know, it's a strange thing. You know, Darren Darren DeViva was on our show and he made a comment, which I later on I realized that was really interesting what he had to say. There are artists out there who are part of the credits for a record, even though they're just one of many people. And you may not actually feel their presence or it, you may not identify the song with that artist. You know, one of the biggest hits in the last few months is the song that Mark Ronson has had. With Bruno Mars. Yeah, oh, sure. And, it's a great record. And, and Mark Ronson is the producer, and I'm pretty sure he co-wrote it, but he doesn't sing on it. Mm-hmm. And yet he is the num- he is the name that you hear first on the record. And Bruno Mars is doing all the singing. And yet Mark Ronson is being given credit for having a hit. Mm-hmm. I think it's a little so different. This is a- <laughs> yeah, right. You're, you're talking about a different, you know, a different genre, really. But I'm just saying he's not the vocalist. Yeah. Mark Ronson is not the vocalist, but yet he is the he is an equal name in the artist credit on the record. Right. Well, it's kind of his album. It's just that he has other people singing all the songs. Right. I'll give you an example. Just the two of us. Grover Washington Jr. is credited as right. the artist. Bill Withers sang it. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So but with Paul McCartney is different, you know. I, I don't know. I I just don't. I, I I include it as I say in my Paul McCartney playlist, but I I don't really think of it as a Paul McCartney record. Mm-hmm. It's just something he's on. Mm-hmm. 
yeah. you know, and and whether he's credited or not is is almost a, you know, I think I think there is less to debate about whether Roger Maris's sixty one home runs should count without an asterisk than there is to have this as a Paul McCartney record without an asterisk. It's true. <laughs> Well, I just know that he was involved with the record. He plays on it, and he had something. It it is, you know, a creation of his. I don't necessarily think that he has to sing lead for it to be his record. And it may not be a creation of his. It may it may be a well, a collaborative creation. Well, that's still a creation. It's it's mm-hmm. a part collaboration. Mm-hmm. But I mean, can you can you really say with an absolutely straight face, this is Paul McCartney's latest hit? No, no, I, 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 uh, I, I don't even think of it as, as even. I, I, I don't even put it in that category. I, I mean, as a song, I really don't. I mean, look at all the look at all the guest appearances that that George and George Harrison did. You know, I mean, that's you can't. There's not. I mean, he made some great guest appearances. If you look in the um, um, Christopher Englehart book, um, but you can't count those as George's songs. You and know. his slide guitar is so distinctive on some of those records that it's, you know, you know, he's there mm-hmm. um, with right. Paul on this right. record. You just sort of are taking everyone's word that he's there. You know, you listen to some of these things George played on. And it's like you could tell 10 miles away. Sure. You can, George you, Harrison. you can tell he's on Basketball Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Good point there, Al. <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, I, I, I see what everyone's saying here. You don't really feel... Paul's presence no. on uh, on these records, we just have to you know take it at their word that he was very much involved with these records, and I I do believe that he is involved. So, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's a gray area. It really is. There's a lot of records, especially you know you're talking about all the side projects and all. So many songs that the Beatles wrote for other people, whether they're on it or not, they had a hand in it. And so many ways, I think of them. I really identify those songs with them, you know? I mean, Mm -hmm. for example, just going through the All Together Now book, which has been like a Bible for me, you take a song like um, Mine For Me, which Mm -hmm. Paul wrote and Rod Stewart recorded. Right. I will think of that as a Paul McCartney song, even though it's a Rod Stewart recording. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he wrote the song, even though you don't really hear him on the record. So, you know... It all like depends on how you look at it, song. really. Yeah. Okay. True. I have to. I have to disagree because I've never thought of that as a, as a straight out McCartney song. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, he wrote it, and 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 Rod sings it, but I've never I've never even considered it as, you know. I mean, maybe if I, I'd I'd love to hear a McCartney version of it. Yeah. I mean, I've I've always thought of it as a Rod Stewart record that Same was here. written by Paul McCartney. You know, like Let's yeah, Love. I mean, it's a Peggy Lee right. record. You know, just I was happened. just going to, yeah, right. I was just going to bring that but up the, too. Uh-huh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but if you're the songwriter, that you're playing a huge part in that record. Oh, of course. It's it's not it's not just who's singing the record. There's more to it than that. Oh, sure. So you yes, think of is. so you think of from a window is a great Beatles hit. No, but I think of it as as a Paul McCartney song that Billy J. Kramer recorded. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I still think of it because he wrote the song. How you know he played a major part in that song. It's okay. not just Billy singing it. So mm. all those songs, really, to me, oh, yeah, there's there's a lot more to it than who's the vocalist. I mean, you wouldn't have had those songs in the first place had they not written them. Sure. So, I mean, just like uh, we listen to a lot of artists, and, and we'll probably get into this with uh, this band called The Weaklings, mm-hmm. which Glenn Burtnick is behind, but right. half of their new album are songs the Beatles gave away to other right. artists, right. which you could hear the Beatles, you could hear Beatles arrangements to those songs to begin with, you know, and they work really well. Mm-hmm. But the point is that all those songs, all those early Lennon McCartney songs that they gave away to other people, you know, they wouldn't have had the hits without them to begin with. So I do very strongly associate the songs with the songwriter. Everything oh, cool. to me starts with, with the songwriter. Oh, if you don't course. have the song, everything else is pointless. <laughs> Sure. You know, I mean, you know, with all the conversation recently about the uh, the Dylan album of, uh, you know, songs associated with Sinatra, uh, you know, obviously 
you know, some enchanted evening, you think of it more as a, you know, as a, as a Rodgers and Hammerstein song rather than, you know, any particular, really almost any particular vocal version of it because there are so many. Mm-hmm. It all, mm. it does indeed always begin with, with the song. That's, uh, I think, in fact, I think uh, my old stopping ground at ASCAP, I think that was one of the, the various uh, slogans. You know, it all begins with the song. Hmm. You know, and that's why I'm very vocal about saying this about about recordings and songs. Uh, you know, to me, when you're talking about the Beatles, if you're talking about a song like Strawberry Fields Forever, it is a John Lennon song first. Mm-hmm. You know, what the Beatles brought to the record made it special, sure. but it all started with John to begin with. Right. So I identify, I identify songs with the songwriter first in most cases. Mm-hmm. And especially if it's a famous songwriter, you could take an Irving Berlin song and Tony Bennett could sing it. Of course. But, you know, sure. as great a singer as Tony Bennett is, I'll think of Irving Berlin first. Sure. And I'm not saying that with four or five seconds, I'm thinking of Paul McCartney first, but he's one of many songwriters on it. Right. I know that he had a hand at it in some way. At so this, I do think it. But at this point, we don't know how much, you know, he he brought to the, the you know, the writing of the song. Well, mm-hmm. you know, that that brings up one issue here that I've wanted to bring up for the past month or so mm-hmm. since the whole Kanye West thing, which is and I find this really interesting. Paul hasn't said a word <laughs> about his working with him. Exactly. So we don't. We don't even we don't really know, you know, why he wants to work with him. We he must admire him as an artist or else he wouldn't be doing this. Mm-hmm. And we don't know the extent of the collaboration, whether they're fifty fifty or it's more Kanye or more Paul mm-hmm. or whatever. It's kind of interesting why he's been silent since all this has come out since the beginning of the year. Yeah. So it, it is two it is two months now. So it is kind of interesting. Maybe he's being very careful about, you know, what mm-hmm. he's what he's going to say about Kanye, yeah, especially anytime Kanye looks ridiculous, you know, yeah, I don't think which Paul is wants to speak time. out. <laughs> I don't think Paul mm-hmm. wants to talk all that much about him. So, yeah. but uh, it, it would be interesting if we found out exactly how much Paul has had a role in these records. Yeah. But we shouldn't assume, we shouldn't assume that he's had very little role. Right. Because we don't really know. And I, I would imagine in the coming months, we'll probably find out yeah. much more. But usually when Paul has a new project out, he's all over the place talking about it. Mm-hmm. And he hasn't said anything about this at all. Or Rihanna. No. For that matter. So, right. um, interesting. Yeah. Okay, so that brings this show to a close. If you would like to get in touch with us, we have an email address, which is things we said today, radio show at gmail.com. And we also have our own Facebook page under the show's name, Things We Said Today. And I do want to make mention of my website, KenMichaelsRadio.com, because in addition to having weekly Beatles trivia where you can win some great prizes, I do run special contests upon occasion uh, in which you can win unique prizes. And there's a brand new special contest going on right now on my website where you can win a combination of both Ringo Starr movies, The Magic Christian with Peter Sellers, and Caveman. So if you want to win those two DVDs, as a combo package, just go to KenMichaelsRadio.com. Al, you had something you wanted to say? Uh, just that actually tomorrow um, I'm doing uh, an interview with Alan Haber of uh, Pure Pop Radio, and that should be airing at some point uh, in the ne- probably within the next couple of weeks. It's uh, kind of in conjunction with the fact that um, uh, the things we said today will be airing on Pure Pop Radio in conjunction with Ken's show, Every Little Thing. Yeah. A double bill. Right. <laughs> That's great. And thank you, Alan, for uh, for taking things we said today. We really appreciate it. Uh-huh. If uh, anyone wants to get in touch with you, Al, they can do so how? Uh, mainly through uh, the, either my Facebook page, uh, Al Sussman, uh, and uh, on Twitter at, uh, at asus49 or www.beetlefan.com. And uh, on Facebook and Twitter, the 1965 series goes on now into the third month. Yeah, and by the way, purepopradio.com is a great music station for people who, like Beatle fans, want to hear very strong 
melodic pop Mm -hmm. from the 60s on up, and you're going to hear a lot of stuff there that you never heard before, as well as some of your favorites. So if you want to discover, if you still want to discover new music that you haven't heard before that sounds like the music you grew up with, you know, and with uh, the Beatles, you have all those hallmarks of great melodies, great harmonies, great hooks. Uh, You know, there's so much of that that you can find on that radio station. So I highly recommend going to Mm purepopradio.com. Alan, how about you if people want to get in touch with you? Um, Probably the best way is through Facebook. Um, I've got two pages, Alan Cozen and Alan Cozen Remixed. Also, you could send me a direct message on Twitter. It's at Cozen, K-O-Z-I-N-N. And there you have it. And you, Steve? The the best uh, email address to get to me is BeatlesExaminer at gmail.com. I'm on uh, Facebook under my name and also under Beatles Examiner. And I have a, a Beatles group called Beatles News and Commentary where you can talk about the, the news and, and, you know, drop stories. And I'm just all over the place. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> it's all over the place. That, that's true. What have you heard? All right, so for Things We Said Today, I'm Ken Michaels being joined by Steve Marinucci, Al Sussman, and Alan Cozen, thanking all of you for listening, and we'll see you next time. Mm